So, I recently got this PS2. Uh, it's pretty used. My plan was to use it as usual, but as you can see, there's a problem. It's getting stuck. Let's try one more time. Not opening. Yes, the problem is that the disc tray is stuck. This is a very common issue with older PS2s, especially the fat models. Um, so we're going to open it up today and fix it, and we'll go through that process. As you can see, it's also really dusty, so I'm planning on, well, I planned to clean it as well, but there was actually a little bit of a mishap during that cleaning process, which you'll see later on. We will be using the Xiaomi Toolkit. I really love this screwdriver set. They have all the screws I need. Start by taking off the eight little covers for the screws on the back of the PS2. There are two on the lip, as you can see right there that I'm getting right now. And then there are six right underneath. Four of them are rubber and the other four should be plastic. I recommend using a uh, regular flathead. And then using a regular Phillip head, you can take apart basically the rest of the system, which is re something really nice about PlayStation. You don't need special screws like you do with Nintendo to take things apart. With PlayStation, I've always found like a regular Phillips head and a regular flathead will get you so far. Now, for these screws, there are going to be four of them that are longer than the others. You want to make sure that you remember which ones those are because they have to go in those spaces. And I believe there's one that's like in the me a medium size and that's really important to remember as well. You want to just flip it over and the top should just slide right off as long as you've taken off the warranty sticker. You want to be mindful of these buttons in the front. They're really delicate, so you want to just kind of push it forward while you lift it up. That is some dust. And as you can see, I have good cause and reason to want to clean. Like, look at that. That is disgusting. And I got this from a teen center, so who knows what's been inside of it. can't see it, but it was so dusty, bro. It was so dusty. So, we want to just start taking off the screws on top of this black thing covering the, uh, this black cover on top of the disk drive. I guess it's the black top of the disk drive. So, we want to start taking those screws off. There should be two in the front, and then there are these tabs underneath these four slots. You want to just push them away from the PS2 to open that up and lift up that cover. At this point, we wanna plug our PS2 back in and turn it back on and use the open function to open it if it will open that way. We really don't want to force this drive because these are really delicate and it is a pain up the rear to get a new one. So it's a lot easier to do that. The biggest issue is that they, the, um, the mechanism that's being used has just gotten worn out a little bit. So we're going to take off these four screws that hold in this bay right there. It holds in the bracket. And then there are these two screws that hold in that little rotator thing that rotates the laser and there are these two tabs again that you have to push out at the bottom there to take out the bracket and this white tab right here this is the part that is a little bit worn down you want to just push that straight down with some regular force it doesn't have to be like pressed all the way down but you want to just push it down a little bit and that will actually add the tension we need to get that strength for the laser to open and close, to get that drive to open and close, that's the really important thing. And then we just want to put it all back together. It's that simple, guys. That's how easy it is to fix this problem. You, I have, 
I have so many friends that got rid of their PS2s because of this reason, and I just can't help but think about what it would have been like back then if we had known more about fixing these items. How many parents wouldn't have spent, like, hundreds of dollars repairing or quote-unquote repairing, sending it to a repair shop, or just replacing the item. Because I knew a lot of people whose parents just bought them a new PS2 when the disk drive stopped working. You know? Because they didn't have the warranty, so they just bought a new one. Uh, as you can see, I'm just cleaning it out with some compressed air. I actually did end up taking the entire thing apart, which you're not going to really see in this video. But I took the entire thing apart, and I gave everything a good scrub down. With some alcohol. Rubbing alcohol. Um. But yeah. <clears throat> We're just going to put it back together in this video. And we want to test it at this point. Just to make sure that our fix worked. Now as you can see it works just fine. I recommend testing it before you put the top and the bottom back on. It's not necessary. But it's just a good way of making sure that everything's fine. I actually made a mistake when I was cleaning it, and I put the bottom um, next to a heat source. And uh, this is what it looks like right now. I actually had to, you know, Frankenstein it to put it back together. As you can see, I had to Frankenstein it to put it back together because it, the bottom, literally, that part's cut out was literally just melted. And uh, I learned my lesson. Do not dry plastic components by the heater because it will melt. <laughs> by a heater fan, it will melt. So I had to Frankenstein it just to put it back together so that I could at least have it uh, set up in my uh, little gaming setup area, which you'll see later on. So we're going to go ahead, take apart, take out the eight screws again, just to replace this. It actually took me a month to receive the replacement bottom case. There's no area, there are no people that are making like replacement bottom cases, or replacement pieces for the PS2 that aren't like, like the inner hardware. I couldn't find the shelves anywhere. I looked on AliExpress, I looked on eBay. I got really lucky on eBay and found a seller that was selling the bottoms of them, but they it certainly was not new. Um... As you can see, and if you're gonna replace the bottom, don't do what I did here. Take out the eight screws, and then you're really gonna wanna flip it over. Yes, that's right, Ariel. Flip it over, flip it over. Take off the top. And the part that you plug in your controllers to, the controller port, that's where you're going to take the two screws on either end out. I actually broke the screw on the right side on this uh, tape, but you want to take out those screws and those screws are what really are what's left holding in that bottom frame. So we want to make sure that we do that and then we can turn it back around and put it right in to this part. I actually put it in right side up, which is just fine because we're going to secure the uh, bottom case to the actual system with the controller, you know, bracket again. It's totally fine. It's a little bit, it's going to be a little bit wobbly, as you can see, but it's not the end of the world. I don't really manhandle my systems that much. If I did, I'd have to order a whole new part, but it's not that, not, not that serious. And then we're just going to go ahead and put the next eight screws right back in, making sure that we put all the screws that belong in each specific place in place. I actually don't really mind the look of this black and blue PS2. I'm really kind of bummed that I don't have that blue bottom anymore because that was really nice to have that edition of the PlayStation 2. But it's not the end of the world. I'm not looking to sell these in any way, so it's not like horrible. And that's what it looks like. Not bad at all. Not too shabby. And I know that a lot of people don't give this game that much love, but I love Jack's 
2 and Jack 3. I love the Jack trilogy. I love them. I actually chose Jack 3 because it's PAL. And as we can see, it turns on just fine. It opens up just fine. And we want to make sure in the future, just to make sure that we don't wind anything down, we want to make sure that we use the button to open and close the draw. Anyhow, guys, thanks so much for tuning in. This was a pretty quick fix-it video, I suppose. I'm not sure if it's really quick or if it's really long. I'm sorry if it's really, really long. If you enjoyed this video, uh, please leave a like. Let me know down below in the comment section. If you want to see more videos like this, you can subscribe. I would appreciate that. And yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. And I hope you guys have a great day. Bye!